Hello, and this is topic three in Mate, two ten, Mate 310 and 350 on polymer yielding. In this section of the lecture, we're going to talk about yielding from the perspective of the molecular mechanisms or the microstructural effects on yielding in polymers. Basically, in polymers, yielding occurs so that the covalent bonds don't have to be broken. It would require more energy to break the covalent bonds, obviously, than it does to break the weaker van der Waals bonds and slide the chains past each other. Consequently, the yield stress cannot be modified through processing of isotropic polymers, unlike metals. So the yield stress is difficult to change in polymers. Let's take a look at yielding in glassy polymers first, or those polymers that lack a crystal structure. Without a crystal structure, dislocations and slip has no meaning. So instead, what's happening is, is you're getting conformational changes in the polymer molecule backbone. In other words, the, the bonds are rotating along the backbone of the polymer chain, allowing the chains to rotate, stretch, and slide past one another. It turns out that transconformations, which remember are the lowest energy conformations available, much slightly lower than those of Gauss, become increasingly common with increasing strain. This suggests that the chains are straightening since the transconformation is 180 degrees relative to the first atom, so that would result in a straight zigzag chain formation. So that means that as the strain increases, we're getting more alignment of the chains themselves. And that alignment puts more load on the covalent bonds, which would imply that for glassy polymers, the strength goes up as you get more transconformations. And indeed, we see that in the stress strain curve shown in the previous lecture. Semicrystalline problems are a little bit different. Deformation mechanisms such as slip, twinning, and stress-induced phase transformations are possible, but they're still not as prevalent as we see them in metals. Slip and crystalline polymers occurs along the planes which contain the polymer chains, or slip planes, and in a direction parallel to the C-axis of the polymer crystal, or the slip direction. Generally speaking, what happens in semicrystalline polymers is that first, you orient the amorphous regions of the chains and straighten them along the direction of the tensile axis. In the next step, the crystalline planes slip and align themselves in a shear orientation with the applied stress. So you can see here that the planes of the crystalline region are being sheared in, in order to allow deformation in the vertical direction. And that shear occurs parallel to the C-axis of the crystalline structure, the unit cell. At very high strains, the crystalline lamellae will break up without breaking the polymer chains. This allows the polymers to be stretched even further and is the reason why polymers are able to exhibit strains of greater than 200% elongation. One of the phenomena that occurs when, strains, when polymers are pulled to very high strains is that they become stronger due to the alignment of the polymer chains along the stress axis or the C-axis of the unit cell. If I plot tensile stress, along the y-axis versus the true strain along the x-axis, we tend to see a straight line relationship between those two parameters. We also see that not all polymers behave the same way. High density and low density polyethylene have relatively low amounts of strain hardening or orientation hardening as the chains line up. But PVC and polyamid 6-6 or nylon 6-6 orient and therefore strengthen much more than polyethylene. The reasoning for this is the nature of the mer units. In PVC, for example, we have, mer we have chlorine atoms sticking off the side of the mer unit that form stronger van der Waals bonds as the chains become more aligned. Crazing is another phenomenon that occurs in polymers and leads to some additional yielding. Crazing is basically the mechanism by which cracks travel through glassy and sometimes semi-crystalline polymers. As you can see in this picture, this is a craze. It's a small crack, but unlike metal cracks, the polymers bridge the crack. The chains actually bridge across the crack and hold the crack mouth somewhat closed. This crazing can happen with cracks occurring parallel to one another, as you can see here. Crazing is highly sensitive to a number of factors, including temperature, with crazing occurring more easily at high temperatures, stress, crazing occurs more easily at high stresses, and environment. Crazing will happen more readily in corrosive environments than it will in natural environments. And of course, time plays an influence as well. Because of the viscoelastic response of polymers, crazing can actually occur over time instead of the sort of instantaneous cracking observed in metals. All of these 
influence the extent of crazing. As an example, polystyrene in air at 20 degrees C, crazing will occur within about 30 seconds when you apply a load or stress of 25 megapascals. But if you reduce that stress to only 10 megapascals, it takes 24 hours for crazes to appear.